Let's stay Friday night because Friday night in my household was a pizza night. Let's go delivery of the game. It's brought to you by Hungry Howie's Flavor Crust Pizza. It's the official pizza of Cash the Ticket. And you got to deliver Emory Jones in Cincinnati onto our plates because <laughs> what are you doing with this on our show sheet? <laughs> Let me tell you something. If Emory Jones showed up on your pizza, send it back. I, I can't <laughs> believe I'm doing it, but I had him last week, 14 and a half against OU. Here's why. If we really look at football, all right, I'm going to get whatever I deserve betting Emory Jones. So if he goes out and throws three interceptions, you got to you got to be willing to live with it. Like, what am I missing? How are they favored at BYU at night? Well, here's how. First of all, their front seven. I told you it's pretty wicked. My boy, my boy Corleone is no joke. Mm -hmm. And then Tyrell Bobs or whatever his name is. The point is, well, hold on. You're the official OU spokesperson. No, I know. They, they snuffed out OU's They run played game. really well. And BYU couldn't run the ball last week anyway. There it is. Nine yards total against Kansas. 22 carries for nine so yards. So automatically I go, okay, I got BYU to be one-dimensional. Then it's Keaton Slovis. Is he really going to go win a game by himself? No. All right. Can Cincinnati maintain some balance? Well, yes, they should be able yeah. to run it. Yeah. The issue with Cincinnati is the red zone. They move it between the 20s, and then unspeakable things happen. <laughs> We're talking a missed 26-yard field goal. We're talking an interception in the end zone. We're talking clown car on fire stuff. But I think it's telling. Now, the number today is one and a half, which makes me feel a little better. Okay. Why? Because college kickers, two-point conversions, one and a half is powerful. Sure. I don't think BYU is any good. And if BYU can't run it, and since he's going to dominate T.O.P., stay balanced, I got to bet that Emory Jones doesn't launch himself into the sun. I'm actually going to play Cincy. I told you, I, I, I didn't let the Miami-Ohio loss screw me up with what I'm watching. They play defense. And they, Satterfield is moving it. I like that they were using tight ends last week. Couple, I mean, do you see the tight end drop the wide open ball? And I knew you were celebrating and I was upset. I just feel like this is a good spot for Cincy. This is not a good BYU team. I want you to find another podcast that's betting back-to-back -back Cincinnati Bearcats point spreads. But look at you, Emory Jones, unfazed over there. That's, you know what that is? It's kind of frightening. But I just hey, feel I'm like proud of you, buddy, because I, respect I would need they... points. I would need points to bet Emory Jones. Home, road, sun, moon, stars, couldn't do it. Look, it's probably a bad thing of, that I'm doing. Uh, the idea of Cincy being a short favorite, but I think it's powerful that the market is telling you they're going to go to Provo and be favored. The game would scare me more if it was Cincy getting two and a half. Look, the cap is the cap. Mm -hmm. BYU can't run the football, and since he's not going to let you run it. No, it's a good matchup to exploit. So I feel so. like I got to ride with what I know. Now, again, is Cincy going to be able to take that operation on the road, play the way they played last week? Is there a letdown? Did they shoot their wad against OU? Plausible. I, I got to ride here. I got to go with Cincy and play what I know. Defense travels. They have one. God help me. Emory Jones. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Cincy lay the one and a half. So you've got to play on Friday night. Yeah.